Let's jump up from Analyze Color over to Create Curves. Now, Create Curves is similar to how it was before, but again, it's been enhanced. Um, the graphs are significantly more accurate. Uh, the graph now uh, it only contains the data points that are basically the control points that are over here on the right. You can break this into each particular channel, and when you do that, a different line appears in addition. Uh, and you might be able to see it. You can see it a bit on the yellow. Let's see where it shows up. That's probably most visible in the cyan. I'm going to uncheck a few of these there. Now, one of these data sets is crazy, as you can see. Uh, but what you can see in this particular graph for cyan is that you have these particular data points, but Curve has some corrections that it really wants performed. And now you can go to each channel and make a decision about um, how you want things to appear, how, how many data points you want, how many control points you want. And I'm going to zoom in on this part of the graph, okay? And I can see just perhaps at, uh, oh, I don't know, 41% or somewhere near 42%, I should probably have another control point here. So I'll go over to the thing on the right here, click plus, type 42 and hit return, and Curve adds that control point to the set of control points. And you can see it, it, it matches the curve shape that, uh, that Curve actually wants us to do. So using this method, you can zoom in and make sure that you have the right kinds of control points that you want. So this is a new feature that, that I, I really like because I always felt that if you had a rip that could, uh, would allow a number of different control points in there, it wasn't always easy to determine how many you should do. As before, you can go under the gray balance, you can turn the gray balance on or off, and you can go into the options and determine uh, whether or not you want a, a new feature, basically, that we call precision gray balance, which is normally on. But if your data is kind of whacked, like in this particular case, you might want to uncheck this. It can smooth things some. Uh, and the gray correction threshold is where it starts to feather off the correction from a certain point onward. In addition to a text file, you can now export curves in a Photoshop curve file, which you can import into Photoshop. If you go into Photoshop, go into curves and say load, you can load this in. Or you can export it as a device link profile. This can be very handy for testing. The other uh, possibility here is a text file, and there are a few different formats that we support. The CGATS format is a pretty typical one that Curve used to export, certainly is available as well. Uh, the TED file format, which is a new uh, file format, this ag for rip information. If you have a rip you want supported, whether you're a manufacturer or not, let us know. Send us example files if you have them, and we will do what we can to get them in there. The calibration run report basically summarizes uh, the graphs and the information that you've seen in front of you, as well as the customer information and all that sort of thing. I'll do a quick preview here so we can see it. But it summarizes the information you may have typed in at the beginning. Uh, it's, it puts in the customer's name, Joan Printing, and report paired by information. Uh, obviously, it has the control points as well. Some graphs and some of the statistical information are all summarized under this one report. You could consider it sort of a pre-press level report or a customer level report. But the second report that you can print is the printing guide. And that's a quick guide for those standing on the press room floor to aid in printing in the future. And it also has a number of different areas where you can see it's blank. The purpose for that is for you to use your production instrument. This is the opportunity to write in the values from the handheld in case they differ so that you have production values on a day-to-day -day printing basis. Now we have the ability to add another run. So you click on the plus button over here on the left. It creates a second run. And I'm going to load in another P2P as if it were the results of my second run. So here we are in run two, as selected on the left. Okay? When you're looking at run two, you say it's based on run one. And that tells Curve that all of the calculations should be relative to the first set of curves that were built. And that's a big deal. There's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes when you do that simple selection. The other thing that changes when you go under Analyze is there's a Run to Run tab. And that does a quick comparison from one run to the next. So you can find out just how close the second run was to the first. These are the metrics that where they should be very, very close. This is basically solid ink, uh, overprints, paper color, etc. And as well, it gives you a delta density number. So if there's a change in density, then you can use that value. But this is a quick test to find out how well one run matches another. And it's very illuminating to look at this. So the G7 and TVI tabs give the same sort of information. How well did I do? And, you know, it, sh it should look a lot better. It does look a lot better because your second run is that much closer to 
you know, if the, the good TVI curves you may have been aiming for or the good G7 you may have been aiming for. Uh, but it's an interesting thing to note here. When you go into create curves, it should have a tuning, an iterative tuning capability as it goes forward. And so if you do subsequent runs, the curve shape will change a little bit as the data from every run tweaks and tunes the curves that are being calculated. Because there's a lot of stuff that goes on under the hood there. And it's done in a way that is, is significantly more accurate than what you could do in curve one based on like the delta method in that. Now you can add multiple runs here and if I did another calibration run report um, it would be for the run that was selected. So if I go into calibration run report I'll just run one because this is the sort of thing you might want to leave with the customer if you're doing it on behalf of a customer. And this is the one that says see how great your press is doing now? We have these funky correction curves down here but your TVIs are great, your gray balance is great, your NPDC curves are great, and everything's wonderful. And in, the, in this particular report, it mentions the run name is run two. It's based on run one. So it documents what you're doing at every stage. So you can also rename these golden run or whatever we want to call it, right? And it'll remember that so that you can remember it. Basically, in the future, if you want to go to, for instance, the G7 verify stage. Now, in the G7 verify stage, you choose a run that you want to compare to. It can take any kind of data file, much like the ink test can. When you're making runs, you have to have P2P targets. But when you get to the G7 verify stage, you can put anything in here. Again, you know, press sheet bar or ISO target or whatever. So I'm going to drag something in here, and it'll do a quick calculation based on that. And this is intended sort of as what you might call a spot check tool. It's not a full-blown trending and analysis tool, uh, but it is the sort of thing where you can load it up. You can say our golden run is what we're shooting for for everything that we do. Drop a couple samples in there. How do we do? Uh, and then finally, the, the last feature here is the virtual press run. The basic idea behind it is if when you do your G7 press runs, if you put a P2P target and an IT8 profiling style target on the same sheet, you do your press run, you can measure the P2P and the IT8, obviously. Now, when you measure the P2P, you'll get P2P data files. You'll put them into curve, into run one, and you'll do your first round, right? Now, on a number of different printing systems, truthfully, all of them cost money. Some of them are very expensive to do every single, every time you do a press run, they're very expensive. Um, so what the virtual press run allows you to do is take the curves from any particular run and apply them to the IT8 data. So if you were putting the IT8 on your target so that you could measure all the data, average it, and build a profile for proofing or maybe even for some separation purposes, the first IT8 is usually kind of a throwaway because the first run is done with the curves being flat in your rip. And so the IT8 that you measure, you can't really use. You can build a profile for it, but you're, not, you're never going to run the press in that state again. But in this particular case with VPR, what you do is you select the run that it used. So we'll se select run one. We'll select the target data to be curved. You can select whatever data file you might choose to select here. And I'm going to select like uh, an IT8. Now, the curving method used, we have two choices. We can curve the LAB values or the CMYK values. And what it means is basically we're taking this set of measurements from your sheet, which is composed of CMYK values and the subsequent measure, measurement, let's say LAB values. Okay? Now, the CMYK values in this particular case are IT8s. And so that's a very specific set of CMYK patches. And if, if you select curve LAB values, then the CMYK values are unchanged. But when you're done, it saves out of a measurement file, and the CMYK values are unchanged, so it's still an IT8. And if your profiling software requires that, then that's the method you want to use. Uh, but if you have profiling software like, say, ProfileMaker, for instance, then you can select curve the CMYK values. And then it will alter the CMYK numbers in the file and leave the measurements alone. Uh, that could be more accurate. It's a little faster. You can certainly do it one way or the other for comparison. But once you have everything set up, you just say curve and export. It saves out a measurement file, and then you can use that in your profiling software and your set. The virtual press run function is available as a separate module to curve. When you buy curve, you can add it on or not. You can upgrade through your existing dealer that you bought curve from, or you can do it directly off of the Chromex website. It's up to you. Um, basically, you send your username and serial number from your existing version of Curve, and then um, that gets you the reduced, significantly reduced rate for upgrading to Curve 2. If you have any, uh, any remaining questions or any problems or anything, by all means, please uh, 
get in touch with us. Thank you very much.